Hello world, Wave Time here, bringing to you another episode of EE Power. Now, I've pretty much determined something quite interesting. As I said before, APIs can't really share their, you know, variables. And unfortunately, while testing rigorously my query program, I realized that it was trying to attempt to share some variables. So what I had to do was I basically made some more words in the move thing where I can get the current X, Y, and Z position. These might be able to be useful for later people. Now, what I think I'll do is I'll see what I... Hmm. Help paste bin. Okay, so what I'll do is... Let's see. Paste bin put move. And apparently there's no such program as that. So I might have to figure out something um, interesting. Yes. Anyways, another thing that I noted is the fact that when you log off and log back on, while your quarry is doing something in the interactive mode, it exits the interactive mode and holds everything and probably wipes the variables. I don't know. Let's see. Move dot current X. Do I have anything for the current X? Apparently not. So this is completely uh, dead right now. So I'm going to have to re-add the variables. But what we're going to eventually do is check. No. What we're going to do is make some more programs so that we'll see if we're able to actually do all of this without going into interactive mode. And we'll have to see if we're able to log off and log back on without the computer completely screwing itself. Now, it might be because it's not an emulated computer like the Red Power one is, and it's actually running off the main computer, but we're going to have to find out anyways. If it is the fact that it's the latter, that means the red power computer would be much better for a big arse quarry. Anyways, let's go onwards and actually do something. So let's make a program called start. And what we'll do is we'll have to print input your current input. Hmm. Let's see. I think that's good. So input where you want the query to start and we'll have X. Uh, we'll also have to print, not print F, the other stuff. So we need to put an input for an X. And what we'll do is we'll then read our X, local X equals read. Now print input y local y equals read. And finally print our input z and local z. Okay, so what we're going to do is exit it and do start and input where you want the query to start, let's say negative 120, input your y, negative 10, input z, negative 4 jillion. And it read it and put it in the local variables, but we haven't done anything to those local variables. So what we'll have to do is do some stuff with these local variables. Let's see. We'll also have to print Hmm. Input. Ah, maybe we can put the dimensions of the quarry later. So save that. Let's exit that and edit dimensions. Well, we'll print, and what we'll do is input the dimensions of the quarry. 
and of course we have to do the same thing and now we'll just put a local width equals read still got time good print now I probably have this as a horrible way to do it <coughs> enter width enter length Ah. And print enter depth. Local depth equals read. Okay. Now go back up here, edit this so that it's correct. Go down here, and now what we'll do is We'll actually do quarry dot dimensions width length depth and that'll put all the dimensions in the quarry dimensions. Now we'll save it and exit and do dimensions. Input the dimensions of the quarry. We'll want a width of five, length of five, depth of five. And for some reason, dimensions attempted to index a nil value. So what that means is that probably, let's edit dimensions. Ah, that's what it means. We need to go into Lua and os.load api move os.load API quarry. Now we'll exit this and try to do dimensions again. Say 10, 10, 10, and all of it's inputted. Now we might be able to have a fun initialization when we say input the uh, position of the quarry. So let's do the set position. So let's edit set position <sighs> sorry I had to cough no not turning head and cough that's completely different and you should feel shame right now shame on you shame now if we can actually go here good now as you see there's an updated railcraft version available but I don't think I'm going to even bother updating right now because I have fun stuff to do now uh, let's save this. We're at set position. Okay. I know it's supposition, but whatever. Let's just set the per position. Print. Local x equals read. Print. Now, I know that the print command actually puts a new line character, a character return when I am doing this, but I don't want to bother with figuring out what the one that doesn't do a new line character is right now. And it really doesn't matter. Z and local Z equals read. And finally, print our direction. And local dir dir. Okay. Now, just in case that's some sort of like awesome language code or something, I'm just going to put it like that instead. Direct equals read instead of dir, because you never know, dir might be some sort of hidden agenda or something. I don't know. Does it look like I'm a wizard? Well, you'd have to look at my charming good looks. Hey there. Anyways. Okay, so we got that. Now we have to put it into our move.set position. X, Y, Z, direct. And save that, exit it, set position. Now our current X 
is negative 1, 2, 3, 64, 2, 7, 4, 1. And it seems to have worked. Now, we don't really have any way to do go to right now, but I guess you could go into Lua interactive mode to do the go to. It doesn't really matter too much. But as long as I can activate the start and the resume. So start, I'll need to put in a quarry dot start. And we're going to need to add in the X, the Y, and the Z. And that's where it'll start. Now, I think that's all for this. So save, exit, and we'll make an edit resume. I think that's easy enough. Ah, there we go. Now, we're going to have to move this back to its original location. Let's go into Lua Interactive Mode, and let's get the current X. And obviously, it attempted to call a nil value, so we're going to have to probably manually go into it and just change it. So I'll just move it into its correct position and hope for the best. Okay, here we are. Now we're going to have to exit the interactive mode and I'll do another command called get position. So what we'll do is just print our current x. This might not work, so we'll have to see. Save exit get position and it attempted to call nil so that means that when we went into Lua interactive mode we have to reset the position which is a pain in the butt I'm starting to really like the fourth computers in comparison so let's just set the position as negative 120 65 and 260 and our direction is currently 2. Good. Now let's do a dimensions quarry of 5 by 5 by 5. Let's just be imaginative, shall we? And let's go for start. I should do some fact checking with the inputs. Negative 120. I can do that later. So negative 120. Is it negative 120? Yeah, we'll go to 270 and see it. Negative 120, 6, 3, or 6, 4, yeah. And we'll do 270. Okay, it's starting. Hopefully this works. So let's see. It moves down. Tempted to compare string with number expected and got a string when it's quarry 130. Hmm. So, what does that mean? That probably means that the input is not inputting as a number, but it's inputting as a string, which is not exactly the thing that I want. It did manage to go to here, though, so when I set the position, it actually worked. Let's see if it managed to get to the position. And it attempted to call a nil. So that does not exactly give me any confidence whatsoever with this program. Let's check 130. So edit quarry. And we'll have to check what 130 is. Well, test inventory and quarry y is less than or equal to max depth. Max depth should have been inputted. That's part of the quarry command for the dimensions. Quarry dot dimensions would have been able to put max depth. Do I have max depth as a good amount? 120, 120. There we go. Um, Max depth works. It should work. Hmm. That's just annoying. 
let's see if I can figure out what the problem is. What we're going to do is set the position as just dummy numbers and get the position. So when I called get position, it attempted to call nil. So let's just edit get position. And instead of all of this printing, what we'll do is local x equals current x. Basically, ah, move dot current x. I might as well try that. Move dot current x. And then we'll print x. Good, save, exit. Tempted to call nil, so let's set the position again. Set position, we got, uh, say, a zero, a zero, a zero, and a zero. So when we get the position, it's still attempting to call a nil. Hmm. So that is saying something quite interesting and unfortunate, actually. When I'm inputting the stuff, it's not actually sharing variables. So let's edit set position. Actually, let's just do it 0, 0, 1, 0. And let's edit set position instead. So let's just for fun load the OS's, the API, sorry. And there we go. Save, exit. So set position. We'll just have to sleep this off because this is starting to get annoying. Worst comes to worst, I have to stay online for this to work until it's done. Which means it'll have to go back way over here, then I have to turn it off. And then tell it to exit the Lua program. So current position, let's say 0 again, 0, 0, 0, and get the position. After it did not load the APIs again, okay, it attempted to call nil. <sighs> so this is basically a conundrum right now. What this means is that the program that we're doing currently right now the set position, it's not actually setting the position correctly. Or it probably is, but it's not able to access the API correctly for some unknown reason. Basically, the script file, in between each time, it's setting each of them to be nil. Which is not very nice, actually, at all. <clears throat> so it means that we might have to run this entirety in the interactive program, or pay basically put everything in to just one script file which is not exactly the most fun since we won't be able to exit the script file at all and that's assuming that this thing actually works when we log off and log back on when it's a script file I mean I might not be able to do anything at all so let's do Lua current text tempted to call nil and that current previous one attempted to call nil. So let's actually exit and just edit get position just in case we got something wrong. I know it's sub sub yeah. what is it? Current X. And that's supposed to work. Local X. Okay, so that's complete bogus and garbage, and I want my red power computers right away. Maybe there's some other technique I need to learn. Maybe you guys can put in the comment section actually tell me what the problem is. Because I have no clue right now, but I guess what I'm just going to do is... Do some more testing 
and maybe bring it back, maybe actually do a quarry while I'm at it. Maybe a quarry starting right here and just putting out a big hole. That'd be nice. Okay. So I'll get that set up with all of its positions and stuff and see you in a sec. Okay, I'm getting the final parts of this right 271 or is it 261? I don't know. 271. Okay. So let's see if this actually works. Let's test that to see if it actually false good. Now let's see if this goes into the proper location. If it does, we'll see it actually actively quarrying at the position that we implied earlier. So it should stop around there, go down. Obviously it's... Hmm. Maybe something with the go-to, but anyways, we got a 16 by 16 quarry started. 15, 16, now it'll go, and it's actually working. Now there's unfortunately no way to get it out of interactive mode, but let's test this. And its dimensions are now messed up for some reason. Hmm. Let's stop this and edit it. Okay. Control T. Okay, we terminated it. It dropped everything, and it was attempting to drop everything, actually, so... There's something in Quarry that is making it go haywire, or probably in Resume. So, let's exit. Or, la actually, let's do move dot current X. <clears> hmm. <throat> it's still not sharing anything. So let's exit. Let's paste bin uh, quarry. No. How do we paste bin? Let's paste bin help. Or that's not what we need to do. So paste bin. No, help paste bin. What we need to do is. It, okay. This is useful for sharing the HTTP. It must be enabled by that to be able to use the program. So we need to do paste bin put Obviously there's no such program so it's not enabled. Anyways. Huh. <sighs> I'll just edit it, see if there's any problem, and I won't bore you with the details, and eventually I'll get it to paste bin. Okay, so far it looks like this quarry is working. I managed to... Basically what I do did was, in the resume command, I had... I basically changed the go-to instead into a force go-to. S sorry, that's in... Yeah, basically... I changed the go to to a force go to and the elevate to to a force elevate to in its resume command. So what it'll do is whenever it's resuming, it'll force its way to where it needs to be. Now I'm not sure why that was the problem. Oh, also I commented out the starts force go to, but it seems to be working pretty well. It's making a nice defined area. As you saw, I put like some s dirt down to where the strip that it was at before, but let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it'll go up to around here before it actually goes farther down. Now we'll have to wait for it to get to this point to see if it actually works fully. Okay, it's coming up to the point where it'll dig down, then go down. Okay, now it's actually working. So this is the point where it'll actually be a bit slower. I'm going to see if I can time how long it takes for like 10 movements and actually see how long it takes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 7, 8, 9, 10. So it takes about 9 seconds for 10 movements. 
This is slightly slower than my Mobile Quarry Mark IV, actually. Since it's only doing one block at a time instead of five when it's running optimally. But that being said, it'll be able to traverse empty spaces a lot more quickly. And we're also going to have to see what happens when it runs out of fuel. So what I'm going to do is put in a bunch more fuel for it to mm, work at. And hopefully we get some more coal because we're actually running out of coal and we're gonna need quite a bit now maybe you could put a chunk loader eventually here uh, world anchor world anchor requires two diamonds an ender pearl which I don't have sorry an unfortunate interruption just occurred anyways I could eventually get a world anchor it's gonna Probably take two of my diamonds, but they're bought in. <sighs> Wonder what happened there. Anyways, eventually I'll need to get the world anchor. It'll take two of my diamonds, but I think the investment is going to be well worth it. Now, I'm going to need a better chest system than just this. There might need to be some sort of sorting arrangement that I'll need to uh, procure. Eventually, that'll be a possibility, but currently, I don't know how likely of a good investment that actually is anyway so hmm let's see do I have a tree tap no I don't what I think I'll do is actually make some sort of way to automate this as well uh, we're gonna need diamond pipes and we still don't have diamonds huh. also another thing we can do is get the turtle to eventually when it gets to the point where we actually are doing stuff with it and we got night time eventually when we get it to the low levels of the area which will probably make a nice staircase down to go to it might actually be very worthwhile now since that is within chunk loading range I do believe um, let's just watch it huh Okay, it's still going. Let's see if we get out of its range. Yes, it's still working. I can just see the dirt disappearing into the void. Not quite the void, but anyways, moving onwards. Um, We can do some of our industrial craft stuff that we didn't really have any time to do earlier. Now let's put this at a nice little amount like that. We got that. Iron dust. Now, iron dust, what shall we do with you? do we do with the Klondike bar da da okay so we got enough rubber so let's get some of our precious materials right here and make one of those other thingamabobbers that is probably only going to pop into my head when I have it in my head that doesn't exactly sound very comfortable way so I'm just gonna leave it at that uh, circuit yes circuit that's what it is Electronic circuit, we'll be able to make another um, one of these we'll take with a bunch of meat, which I'm not going to explain how that got in there. Five plus redstone and the electronic circuit. Now we have an electric furnace. <coughs> Sorry for the coughing randomly. I'm not exactly feeling the best. Anyways, electric furnace, those will be a lot better when we're smelting our stuff and it will take seven seconds so seven seconds and another thing we're going to want to make is some build craft stuff now I should get my stone axe which I have and look for saplings where are my uh, white saplings do I even have any anymore I'm pretty sure I brought saplings over, so let's just check. Sap. Saplings there, saplings there. No, no, no. How come I only have rubber saplings? I'm pretty sure I brought white spruce saplings. Hmm. Anyways, we're going to need to get some more wood, so I'm just gonna have to cut some more trees get some more saplings that way maybe I can get some more rubber for industrial craft and eventually make a centrifuge and all that fun stuff maybe I cooked it anyways whatever the case is I don't have it with me right now and I probably have only myself to blame 
Once I get saplings, maybe we can get some more fun stuff other than that. That's a lot of dirt. So let's put you there. And obviously that doesn't work. Okay. It's 16 by 16. So that's... Ooh, that is going to be a lot of dirt. So I'll just cut down some trees. Maybe find a way to get some more wood stuff. And then I'll be right back. Now at least we got into coal, so that's a good thing. Still take a while though. Maybe I can eventually... Yep. At least in this biome, they won't be monstrosities. So, just to see how well this actually works, I'm going to put an item into this slot, and it should thus stop, raise to the appropriate level, and maybe go to where it needs to be. Now, where the hell is it going? I have no clue, but when it actually gets there, it's going to just randomly dump everything, so... Obviously, there's a problem. So, what is making it go way over here? Maybe the fact that it's using go to too many times. Maybe the move dot. Maybe this isn't working. It's tempting to call nil. So, obviously, there seems to be some problem with when it needs a return. So, the returning statement is probably doing something to its inner workings. So, if I can't even get this quarry working, there's no point for me having this. None at all. <sighs> is this code just trash? I don't know. So it's terminating when it's doing a go-to. But if it were attempting to call a nil value earlier, it would have said so. So it's doing some sort of go-to statement that is not allowing it to continue onwards. You know, if I can't figure it out this episode, I'm just going to drop it and then continue onwards with another stuff. Sun of a gun. To think that just... Ah, oh my goodness, how did I miss that? Okay, so plus X, right? You see it's plus X and everything's good. Current X equals current X minus 1. What does that tell you? that when I want when I go in the plus direction I'm gonna subtract one I gotta check all the one, other ones because it was always just the Z the, the X direction that was the problem and that is the basic problem and I was testing by going into a test uh, save and it went haywire so I guess I'm gonna see if I can go into my main save edit it then it should be good. So if we go in, we'll be able to edit, move. Just have to go in, change that one little line, that one thing, the minus into a plus, and then this thing will work perfectly. Now, someone probably noted it in an earlier episode, but obviously I didn't see it because I've been recording it in advance. <sighs> I feel like such a dork. And I might as well get this stuff out of the way since I don't need that anymore. Running after this never felt so good. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's focus on our stupid stuff. Okay. So, let's see, as I continue to blank out, okay, os.load api, and let's get the heck out of here. Okay, and it seems to actually be working now, returning, dumping all the inventory, and then continuing onwards. So now that we have a fully functional quarry, and I mean fully functional, now does it return to its original place? Yes, it does. 
<sighs> so now this quarry is fully functional, and because of a stupid negative one, that was the issue, we had a big issue. So now we'll be able to actually figure out how we'll be able to improve our stuff dramatically. Now, that's going to take some time since, well, I want to focus on other stuffs in the meantime because I got a lot of stuff that I want to do, but it's going to be a while for this thing to finish, so I might as well just continue onwards. So we got about mm, four diamonds, I do believe, and that will eventually get some diamonds. It'll take a while to excavate that entire chunk, but I think we can spend our time very wisely. So some of the things we'll want to do is automate this, so I think getting diamond pipes would actually be a very good investment of our diamonds. So if we can get our diamond pipes, uh, diamonds right here, we'll be able to make some diamond pipes. Uh, hell with it. Okay. And that's why I wanted to get the wood. So let's dump most of our inventory and into its characteristic areas and then we can continue okay so now what we should do is make a few pistons because we should make some uh, wooden engine so that we can actually get all of the items out of the chest that will appear when it's finished so I think three pistons shall be good and we'll make those with this and this good now we got the three pistons, we'll put the glass, and we'll actually make some more wood because we kind of need that. And why did that happen? Anyways, and what am I doing? Ah, yes, here we go. Now we'll need some wooden pipes, and we'll need some cobblestone or stone transport pipes as well as our diamond pipe, which will help. Now let's see, this, this, this. This eventually will go with this, and we'll have a lever as well. And let's see. Oh, we need a pick as well, since we don't actually have one since our broke while we were chasing the stupid turtle. If you didn't get what happened earlier, basically I had to chase the turtle because it got away from me because I was a dumbass. That pretty much characterizes the entire episode, so I think we can pretty much wrap here. here. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Anyways, so we'll have to have the engine go here, which will have a lever right here. We'll have this right here, so that the blue side will bring in at least some of the coal. We'll have to get a coal reference sample. What is it doing? Oh. Oh, because there was an empty area. So let's get a coal reference sample right here. So we can use it. Hop up on the turtle. Turtle! Yay! Turtle gave me a leg up. Slow little bastard. Maybe that's why it's called a turtle. Anyway, so. Blue reference sample. Coal goes into this chest. So with that, we'll then be able to bring the rest of the junk to be sorted later, but for now, let's put it into an array of chests. So we're going to put a crafting table in here so that we'll be able to do other stuff in the meantime. And speaking of in the meantime, what we'll do is make another one of those wooden engines. Engines, la 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 la, and I'm getting ahead of myself. There we go. So, chests as well. So let's make all of these into chests. So that we'll have a bonafide quarry chest array. And I guess this will pretty much be a for now. A for now to hide. Haha, <laughs> something that will kill you very, very, very slowly. So hopefully that quarry will eventually get back here so we can test out how well that works. Uh, but in the meantime, we can turn this on so that it can slowly get up to one item a second, which is pretty much what it'll need to be. Now, we did get a bit of flint, so that's pretty much a good thing to start off with. And let's actually see what our quarry is at. It's at a pretty high amount, so let's just test fit this 
by sending it back to its position. And we're going to need to get our way up. Now it's going back. It'll dump all the inventory. And now it'll do its business. I'm not sure what its fuel level is right now, so if it does happen to run out because its fuel is too much, we'll find out. I still hate how these pipes go. You know, just going slowly and everything. Anyways, we'll just check the filter if that works by just putting uh, one of those there. We'll put this here just in case it needs to refuel. But I don't think that's going to be likely. So, just for fun, whenever it gets to its point, I'll just check the resume later by turning that on. It'll halt the quarry when it is finished. So this will take a while. <clears throat> In the meantime, we're going to actually take one of these chests at a very slow rate. There we go. And we'll bring it way over here so that we can actually uh, see if we can get this system fully automated. This little apiary thing. You don't have to really see because it's very easy to compact and automize it. Automize it, yay, woohoo, okay. So we'll have to get a diamond pipe that will go here, and then this will have to insert. Now the problem with this is the fact that if he'll have to bounce back, and if it doesn't insert, we don't have advanced insertion pipes, that's pretty much the catch here. But whatever, what's with a few bees just getting strewn around everywhere, it's not like it matters. Obviously, I have to get everything there, so let's just uh, put this as it's red. And we might just pick up the bees later with an obsidian pipe. Actually, an obsidian pipe would be a very good idea. Thanks for suggesting it, Way. No problem, Way. Glad I could help, Way. Like I said, anytime, Way. And let's just make sure that it's actually pulling stuff out. It's pulling a bee. It looks like it's pulling out the wrong bees at a particular time, so that means one of them will go in the crack slot, the others will just fall, but that's what we predicted would happen anyways. So let's just pick up the dang bees as they fall, and this one will go back in, which, in which case it will be able to breed, and then continue its maiden voyage. Uh, borage. Let's just call it a boar or something. It's not really a boar. The thing that I have is a boar, and we're anyways, why am I such a moron? If you dare answer that. Anyways, so we need to get a lot of coal. Unfortunately, we won't have any way to get coal for quite a while without this thing, you know, ending its disastrous campaign of destruction. But now that I mention it, it might be able to get this, the script files might actually be able to work now that we actually fixed our horrible mistake. Hmm, maybe I can start a nuclear reactor. Think it's too soon? Yeah, it's probably too soon. Another thing that I'll need to work on is some sort of automated sorting room, which will probably take a while. Ha! Well, who knew that being... What? Uh, who knew that being a dumbass with computers actually takes so long? Looks like we ran out of time, so I guess that's all for this time. So, that's all the time we have for this episode of EE e. Power. If you like what you see, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe to future episodes. Wave time here. Signing off. I need to get some stairs in this thing. Have a wonderful day.